to Trying to get on with Heavenly Father. Trying to get on with Heavenly Father. Who's the hour of God? Sri Sunday, Ashley, what's up? To be with you once again today. Thank you, Lord, for His goodness towards each and every one of us. Thanking him for his kindness, for his love, for his mercy that he has poured out on each and every one of us. Thanking him for the help and the strength that he has given us. More so thanking him for this divine vision and revelation that he has passed on to mankind at the end of this world for the saving of our souls through the body of Dr. Henry Clifford Kennedy. At this time, we encourage, invite each and every one to be a part of this divine knowledge today, hoping that through this teaching, you will come to have a profound knowledge of your nine heavenly father, who is your children, and his son, Yashu, Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, Incorporated. This is a school, but it is not a church, and neither have we affiliated to any other religious or scientific organization. The school is only based on a spiritual or divine vision and revelation given to a man by Dr. Henry Lucatini in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Branch schools were set up throughout the continental United States of America and in various parts of the world. Your school is held in Boston, in Trinidad, and I'm your school official dean, I'm Dr. Clifford Waters. In this school, we preach and we teach using the true, correct, original, and only name of God, my Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh. The word of Son, which is Elohim, and the name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, as containing the original Hebrew manuscripts. When scripture translators or Bible translators came across it truly my name, of the heavenly father, which is Yahweh, they wrongly gave us the common title of God. When they came across the true divine, first in title for the word of Son, which is Elohim, they wrongly gave us the common title of God. And when they came across the true name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, whether manifested in or out of the physical body, they gave us the pagan strategy of Jesus Christ. The Lord and God, their titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 states, For though there be the folk that are called gods, showing that there are many of them, whether these gods are in heaven or in earth, as there are gods many and lords many. Each lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. So the question one should ask oneself, what is the name of the creator of the world, seeing that the Lord and God are titles and not names? In the Greek mythology, there are many gods. You have such gods as Hercules, the god of strength, Venus, the god of love, and Neptune, the sea god. Hercules, Venus, and Neptune are their names, or the title of the world. In England, there is a place called the House of Lords. And at the House of Lords, there are such laws as Lord Baltimore, Lord Snowden, Lord Chesterfield, who says the name of you. Baltimore, Snowden, and Chesterfield are their names, Lord Satire, bestowed on them by the monarch of England. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous or it's a wrong name. A mind investigation and your part 
if your good one with sticks and a ring on the side of the angel, you will come forth before you pass. The fact that it did in the Hebrew art read for characters or symbols. There is no characters or symbols in Hebrew. When transliterated letter to letter, some sound symbol to symbol comes close to or resembles that of the English letter J. There is no J in the Hebrew alphabet. Neither is there a letter J in the Greek alphabet, the Latin alphabet, the Russian alphabet, and the German alphabet, especially at the time of the birth of the Savior's work. Further final investigation on your part into the letter J will remain. The letter J was originally or formerly a variant of R. And it became established as a consonant within the 17th century, 17, 18, 19, 20, which gave us 400 years. So the letter J is only 400 years in its total existence on the face of the earth. And the true Savior of the world, who is Yahshua, Yahshua, walked this earth plane 2,000 years ago. And the letter J is only 400 years. So if you take the 400 from the 2,000, you get 1,600 years, or 1,600 years. So it took 1,600 years after the birth of Yahshua the Messiah. After his death, burial, resurrection, the oil of the Holy Spirit, and the apostles going and preach and teach in his name. It took 1600 years after that for your Bible translator to remove the name of Yahshua from the Bible and to put Jesus. Likewise, the first man. That you are my creator, reveal his name to me, is a man you know to be called Moses at the backside of Mount Sinai. And that took place some 4,000 years ago, and the letter changed only 400 years. So when you take the 400 from the 4,000, you get 3,600 years. So it took 3,600 years after Yahweh revealed his name to Moses. And after Yahweh gave the children of Israel a commandment to honor his holy name, it took 3,600 years after that for your Bible translator so to remove the name of Yahweh out of the Bible, out of your translated English versions, see, and to put in Jehovah. So such names as Jesus, Jehovah, John, and Joshua are impossible renderings of those names. When we examine the name Jesus, in the name Jesus, J is originally I. When pronounced, it is pronounced Ebole, which is a Babylonian word. The part S-U-S in the name Jesus come from Zedivisus, the supreme word of the Greeks. And Christ, which is a title, it's not a name, comes from Krishna, the Hindu sun of God, which is the worship of the physical sun you see in the skies of the evil heavens that we know it to be. So right within the name of Jesus and the title Christ, we have a Babylonian God, a Greek God, and a Hindu God. Three pagan gods, three pagan, or different nationalities. The true correct origin, original and holy name of your mind, Heavenly Father, is Yahweh. The name Yahweh comes from the original Hebrew text of Ramadan. Text of meaning for one, two, three, four. And Ramadan representing these four characters or symbols in Hebrew, which are your day of your day. The Hebrew language is a consonant language in that you do not use the aid of vowels to make your words pronounced. So, as represented by these four characters, it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. 
the Hebrew language is read from right to left. Online, that was the English language is read from left to right. When the Hebrew Tetragrammaton is transliterated letter to letter, song to song, similar to similar, this is a Y, this is an H, this is a W, and this is an H. In order to make the Tetragrammaton pronounce the Yahweh in English, as it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people, we as English speaking people, we need the aid of our vowels to make our words pronounceable. And these vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, taking the place of I. Through this divine vision and revelation, it was revealed, in order to know which vowel to use and where to place it, that one must go to the first man, Adam, that was drawn out from virgin and mother earth, using the only vowel in his name, which is the A. Placing it between the Y and the H to make pronounceable the, uh, the masculine portion of our heavenly Father's name. You are further instructed to go to that person and Eve that was drawn out of the man Adam using the holy word in her name, which is an E, placing it between the W and the H to make pronounceable way the feminine portion of our heavenly Father's name. You are my heavenly father, whose true, correct, original, and only name is Yahweh. He is both male and female in principle, right within himself. And we be his offspring, we will testify that this is true. Because right within our physical bodies, wherever we be man or woman, we possess both male and female plants called hormone. The male plant of hormone that is in everybody's body is called androgen. Symbolized by A, should prove that the A is correctly placed between the Y and the H to make pronounceable the R, the masculine portion of our heavenly father's name. The female plan of woman that is in everybody's body is called estrogen, symbolized by E, should prove that E is correctly placed between the W and the H to make pronounceable the A, the feminine portion of our heavenly father's name. So whether we be man or woman, we possess both androgen and estrogen right within us. In a man, there's a greater percentage of androgen and a smaller percentage of estrogen. In a female, there's a greater percentage of estrogen and a smaller percentage of androgen. Testifying to Yahweh, who is both male and female in principle, right within himself, and he has made mankind with that word male and female hormones right within us to depict himself. Elohim, which is the word of Sana, is Yahweh's divine pluralistic title. Elohim is the divine title that Yahweh chose to enter on like that of Lord and God. And he had the Hebrew theology in media. So there is a relationship between Yahweh and yeah, and yeah. When you turn the back, it's a so-called John Biology. The same in the world when he came into his ministry it states, I am come in my father's name, and you receive me now. If another or let another come in his own name, if you will receive. From a natural standpoint, a natural child when it is good in the creation, things on the natural surname. Of the natural father or parent. If that father or parent's surname is Smith, Jones, or Lewis, that child automatically is called Smith, Jones, or Lewis. Likewise, the same with the word. He said, I'm coming my father's name. So we are stating on that masculine portion of the heavenly father's name, which is the other. And the next part of his name, which is pronounced sure in Hebrew theology, it means salvation. So his name is Yahshua. Yah, the short form for Yahweh, and Shua, meaning salvation. Now we have taught us that it is Jesus saying, I am coming my father's name. Based on the translated versions that we do read. So let us see if it is possible 
that it is Jesus back here saying, I am coming my Father's name. With a full understanding that back here 2,000 years ago, there was no chain of word, no part of the word, nor the sound of the letter G. Still, we go to investigate it. See? So if they say his name is Jesus, see, and his father's name is Lord and Lord, some say Jehovah, some say Allah, some say Buddha, whatever might be accepted in one society or the other. So let us look and say, now when you go to Lord, not only is Lord a title, but when you get into the etymology or the root meaning of where the term Lord has come from, see, one will discover that the term Lord comes from Adonai. It has come from Mola. And it has come from Baal. And when you dig the research further, you'll find out that Baal comes from Beelzebub, the prince of demons that you know to be called Lucifer, the serpent the devil or Satan. So that term Lord, see, that it put to the Bible, refers to the devil. See? And there is no resemblance with Lord and Jesus. When you go to God, not only is God a title, but the term God was first used by the Germans who spell it G-O-T-T. And the Assyrian borrowed from the German that spell it G-A-W. And the English borrowed from the Assyrian that spell it G-O-D. And if you read it from right to left, you see what you get. See? And there's no resemblance between the two God and Jesus coming in his father's name. Some say Jehovah. Is the name of the creator of the world. Remember, there is no change in Hebrew. Never was, instead it's not. So when you get to Jehovah, if you do the research, you'll find out that they have changed the tetragrammaton from YHWH to JHBH. And use the foreign words of Adonai, and that is how it came up with Jehovah as the Heavenly Father's name. And if you look into a good foreign written dictionary or encyclopedia, into the term Jehovah, they will tell you the modern sacred name of God, and they will tell you CEO, at least the one I did my research on, that was the explanation. It came. And there is no resemblance with Jehovah and Jesus. Likewise, Allah, there is no resemblance with Allah and Jesus. There is no resemblance with Buddha and Jesus. And whatever the name might be accepted. Showing that it's truly Yahshua the Messiah. Or Yahshua saying, I am coming my Father's name. And you receive me now. And up to this day, the world has not received Yahshua the Messiah coming in his father's name. So that prophecy is still going on in our day. He said, Let another come in his own name, he may well receive. The world has rejected Yahshua and received Jesus and others coming in their own name. And in Acts 1 12, he says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua alone. Let me turn your attention to this child. This child is called Mosaic child. And on this child, Yahweh, which is pure spirit, is symbolized by a cloud. But Yahweh is pure spirit, so it is not a cloud. When you use this flower to pick the hour, you see that the flower has no discernible shape at all. Just as this orange and violet colored flower. 
except to all the edges of this chart. And everything on this chart abides within the oil of the So if you're a principle or a like man, there's everything in the universe. And the sum total of this creation abides within the pure spirit state of the earth. Because Yahweh is the ultimate source, substance. Yahweh is the limit and the bounds of all things. It is within Yahweh, which is pure spirit, that we all live and move and have our being. As son of your, some of the words of them, for we are also Yahweh's offspring. Yahweh knows that man cannot conceive of him or understand him in his pure spirit state. Put us right in himself, in God, the super, in God, the well shaven form, that is having the shape and form of a man, yet without flesh and blood, that he entitled Yahweh the other man, which is the word of son. This great heavenly hands to the mouth of me, Yahweh the other man, he should have died, for it is the original pattern of the universe. It is he, Yahweh the other man, in that same vision of Moses. On top of Mount Sinai in the year 1490, he showed Moses for me, Yahweh Elohim, is comprised in part, not in totality, of these nine divine principal attributes of Yahweh in an organized state of form divine wisdom, divine knowledge, found in divine intelligence, divine love, divine justice, divine beauty, divine foundation, divine strength, and divine power. After Yahweh had Moses to lead the children of Israel or to be. He called Moses on top of Sinai, where he Yahweh Elohim instantaneously transformed himself into this people, thoroughly full of tabernacle patterns of land tree in that vision, which consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a holy mountain law. One, two, three compartments. But one tabernacle factor. We go about in this world to prove that everything in the universe is made and operates and is dictated according to the structure and function of this divine tabernacle factor. And afterwards, we not to escape the factor. The hour of development also showed Moses how to create the heavens and the earth according to this divine tabernacle factor. And he showed Moses the creation from an hour. By the side, Yahweh Elohim could only be seen in divine wisdom and sometimes accompanied by divine revelation, as was given to the so called John of the Eye of Battle in the year 1896, in which he wrote in the so called Book of St. John, chapter 1, beginning of the first verse, which states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. Same was in the beginning with Yahweh, all things were made by him, Yahweh Elohim. And without him, Yahweh Elohim was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was and still is the life or the life of man. Finally, Yahweh Elohim manifested himself as a physical shape and form of a man, entitled Yahshua Messiah. Who the religious go wrongly or ignorantly call Jesus Christ. This is where we find that same so called book of St. John, chapter 1, beginning at the 14th verse, it states, and the word, Yahweh Elohim was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the holy begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. In this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives to follow. One, to help you find a new Yahweh or Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form the nucleus of universal government of humanity in the actual Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, to insert stars of color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spiritual law or so called law of nature. And the powers of ancient humanity. Fourth, to encourage us to move the study of the scriptures, combined with religion, psychology, philosophy, and
and more practical and a concerns. Fifth, the escapade, current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand. The operation of the army's internal purpose, operating through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, and Satan, and his demons, operating in the mystery of iniquity and earth, through the dispensation of God. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith. Which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning of the day, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah and Yahshua the Messiah. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new good state. Our words with his peace, and our slogan is to speak in truth. That the earth may be born with them. 
they still shall be in, in the rooms of the earth. They shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark of testimony which, shall, which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make in mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be in the name of God. And if you look in the half, the red girl. And thou shalt make two cherubs for the gold. Three cubits shall thou make in the two, two ends of the mercy seat. And make one chair on the one end and a third chair on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubim on the two ends of the earth, and the cherubim shall shut short the wings on night covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall be one to another towards the mercy seat. Shall the faces of the cherubim and thou shalt put the mercy seat above, upon the ark, upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I will give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee. Come above the mercy, come above the mercy seat, come between the, the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony. Testimony of all things which I have given me in commandment of the children of Israel. Thou shalt also take a table of Shisham to make a table of Shisham. Two women shall be the land thereof, and a cubit the bread thereof, and a cubit and a half the time thereof, and thou shalt overlay the pure food. And make your your to go in front of the wrong of it. And thou shalt make unto it the border of a hundred wrong of it. And thou shalt make the border in front of the border of a wrong of it. And thou shalt make for a ordinary word. And put the rings in the four corners that are on the Four feet here, over against the border shall the rings be for places of the stables to bear the table. And thou shalt make the stables of Shishu, and over the middle of the room, that the table may be born with them. And thou shalt make the dishes there, and spoons there, and covers there, and bowls there, to cover the door. Your gold shall not be there, and thou shalt set upon a table, show red upon it always, and thou shalt make the hands take of your gold, or beaten gold shall the hands take me. The shaft and his hands, his gold is not, and his covers shall be of the same, and six branches shall come out of the side of it. Three branches of the candlestick go to the one side, and three branches of the candlestick go to the other side. Three bones made, three bones made like on the arm, with a knot and a cord, and a cord in one branch, and three bones made like almond in the other branch, with a knot, knot, and a cord. Of it in the six branches that come out of the candlestick, and in the candlestick shall be four doors made like unto almond with a knot and a cross, and there shall be a knot on the branches of the same, and a knot on the branches of the same, and a knot on the branch, and the two branches of the same according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Your nuts and your branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one good work of your own, and thou shalt make the seven lambs pure, and they shall light the lamp pure, that they may give thanks over against you. And the count pure, and the snuffles pure, 
To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. Now the law is the first five books in the Bible. From Genesis to Deuteronomy. That's the book of the law. And there are 630 laws in all. Not just 10 commandments. So the 630 laws. They were called the book of the law. And that's from Genesis to Deuteronomy. So, as I say, to the law and to the testimony. Now, the testimony is the next to the Bible, which you were taught from Joshua to Malachi. And since there is no Jew in Hebrew, that man's name is not Joshua. That is Yahshua to Malachi. So, to the law and to the testimony. If we speak not according to this word, and the word we refer to, the Bible is telling you God, is not a physical book. But we go about and we talk, and it is demonstrated to us and spoken to us that it's physical book and Bible. It's the word. See? That is not correct. When you read the physical book of Bible that they are translating from Hebrew to English, you'll find there are many errors therein, especially when it comes to the name of the Creator, who is Yahweh Elohim, and his son Yahshua Messiah. So, but when we read about the word, the word is full of grace and full of what? Truth. There's no error in the true word, there's no error in it. See? So the true word will not contain, see, pagan names and titles for the creator of the world and the savior of the world. That's what it is straight away. As straight as I can get it. See? But the word is full of grace and full of what? True. See, and there's errors in every Bible. Even the Bibles that have the true name of Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua in it, you would find some, some mistake. But once man is doing something, he always makes mistakes. Your creator, my creator, does not make mistakes. See? So as I said, you speak more about this word, he was not going to go into a physical book of Bible. And for those of you who are new to this, see, we get it in John 1.1. 1, 1. In John 1.1 1, 1 it says, in the beginning was the word. See, and most people know that verbatim. You can say, see, in the beginning was the word. And we've been saying it for years. And still keep saying it. And yet, still, we will we'll allow ourselves to be told that the physical Bible is the word. Or the word of God. See? But in, if we read it carefully and slow it down, we will hear that in the beginning was the word. And if we think now, was anything in the beginning? You start to do some, I mean, simple thinking for yourself. Was there anything in the beginning of the creation? 
the Lucifer to come with the Tatina, the Bible is the word. See? See, in the beginning was the word, and they tell you, according to the King James Version, they say the word was with God, and the word was God. So if you read in the King James or in the King James Bible, at least we should have a way to go now. To understand that the word is the spirit of the living Elohim. See? Because that type of God is truly Elohim. That's a pluralistic type. And it is Yahweh's pluralistic type. And that is Elohim. See? That is the one who was in the beginning, Elohim. Illustrated here, see, as a spiritual being, like a man, shape and form of, of a man, yet with all flesh and blood. Not the Bible. So that's what John is referring to. When he said in the beginning was the word. That is your coming from your spirit. You see, from the abstract into the intermediary, you see. In shape and form of a man, we have to God flesh and blood. So in this shape and form of a man, we have flesh and blood. In that shape and form. He manifests himself after that into the, the tabernacle pattern that we read about. You see? And that tabernacle coming off of the side, see? Which is the archetype original pattern of the universe. And this tabernacle coming off of the side, which is the word Elohim. You see, and showing now from this pattern, see, he made also what? An intangible tabernacle. And then from it, he said, okay. See, in part, not in totality of himself, he started to the universe according to himself. You see? And the word was with God, you see, or with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. So the word is true, Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh in an Elohistic shape and form of a man, without flesh and blood, that was existed in the beginning. So that's why John could say, in the beginning was the word. You see, you can point him out. And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Same was in the beginning with Yahweh. They say all things. That's what the Bible said, that's right? They say all things was made by the word. Not something. All things. Now, how come? You see, we read in that, and we have never seen a physical book of the Bible make anything. They say all things was made by the word. See? And without him. If you notice, they didn't, they didn't say without it. If you have to say the word is a book, you have to say without it, it. Because the book is an inanimate object. It has no life. But your Bible says without him. In who? Elohim. Without him, Elohim. See? What did you say? Without him was not anything made that was made. Without him was not anything made that was made. In other words, the word made everything in this creature. Read on. In him was life. In him was life. Is there any life in the book, in a physical book? 
in him was life. And life was the light of man. And the light was the light of man. See? Because when somebody dies, there's a common saying that that light is out. And the light was the light of man. That is the spirit of the living Elohim. See? In the physical body that he has made, giving it life. That is the spirit man that is imposed into the physical man. That is where the word is, right inside of you. Or the one you call God is living right inside of you. The spirit. Mm -hmm. And you go to the 40th verse. And the word. And it said, and the word was made flesh. Was made flesh. Now that cannot be a Bible. The word making flesh. Then if the lady, she wants to have a child, she just go to the word. Because the word was made what? Flesh. And the word made everything. See? We say that the word was made flesh, that is, Yahweh, the Elohim, which is the word, made flesh. Now that is Yahshua, the Messiah, they're talking about that. Who you call Jesus? See? See, he was Yahweh manifested in a physical body, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, he is the one who got full of grace, he is the one that is full of grace and full of truth, not your physical books of Bible. See, man has tampered with the original Hebrew manuscript and reproduced these things. And do you know, up to this day, they are rewriting the Bibles and putting things in it to suit what they want and how to control man using it. They find they have not tampered with it sufficiently. You see, they're going further into it. To use it to enslave the hearts and minds of mankind more than they have already done. See? See? Give me Proverbs 29 18. Proverbs 29 18 says, Where there is no vision, no divine vision and revelation, the people perish. Not where there's no books and Bibles, theology, colleges, seminary schools and colleges and universities. So where there is no vision, the people perish. See? And that is what I have said. I say, go to the law and to the testimony. See, the testimony is comprised of divine visions and revelation that Yahweh passed on to those holy men. That is why without no vision, without no divine vision and revelation, the people what? Perish. Because Yahweh Elohim communicated to the prophets and patriots through divine vision and revelation. See, when Moses was at the burning bush, you see, Moses was having a divine vision and revelation at the burning bush when he sees a bush burning, and the bush was not consumed. See? So every prophet that Yahweh sent, he gave them a divine vision and revelation. See? He didn't give them books and Bibles, theology, colleges, and seven, seven, seminary schools. He gave them a divine vision and revelation, all of them and send them into the world to warn the people. So that is why you get the, the, the different ones, see, to be retelling, and the word of God appeared on the higher side and said, the word of God appeared on the 
Jeremiah and said, See, they were to read it from the book of the Bible. See? And if you understand the faith of the world, truly, if you understand it, she would ask her 46, 9, and 10. Remember the former things of old. He said, Remember. See, Isaiah, Yahweh to Isaiah is telling them back here, Remember the former things of old. We have to remember the former things of old. What happened in the beginning? There were no theology colleges and seminary schools in the beginning. So remember the former things of old, read. For I am elder. For I am elder. And there is no and there's what? None else. None else. See, he didn't say, I am Lord of God, and Jehovah, and Adam, and Buddha. See, I am Elohim. See? And there's what? None else. In other words, there's no other creator other than Yahweh Elohim. Somebody will say, well, you know, I don't know the name, but he you know my heart. You know my mind, you sure know it. See? You sure do know it, that is why I sent somebody to one. See? Oh, yes. And because our mind is so what? Hmm. We don't believe it. Not yet. Remember the former things of old. I am eloquent. And there is none one, none else. How could there be someone else? Think about it. Eh? When Yahweh Elohim, he created everything that was made. How are you going to come and tell me there is someone else? Without him was nothing made that was made, and we just said that. So how we can say that? Without Yahweh Elohim was nothing that was made. In other, in other words, everything that was made in this creation was made by Yahweh Elohim. So you can't have no none else. Can't have nobody else. Hmm? So when you get the false pagan gods and images, you say that there's others. See? So you do know your heart and mind, you see. You say, I'm Yahweh and there's none else. You know. I am Elohim and there's none like him. And there's, he said, I'm Elohim and there's none what? Like him. Declaring the end from the beginning. He declares the end from the what? Beginning. So whatever happened, in the beginning, must happen at the one end. You see, it never changes. The purpose of Yahweh never changes. It just keeps repeating itself all the one time. See, it's for you and I to understand it when it's repeating itself. But nothing changes. Everything remains the same. He said, remember the former things of old, I am Yahweh, Elohim, and there is none else. Is that what he said? No? Huh? No one else. What did he say? Declaring the end from the beginning. And declaring the end right from the beginning. So if you want to know what happened, going to happen at the end, Examine what took place in the beginning of this creation and what went on in the beginning. So then you don't have to find a crystal ball. See, you don't have to dip your hand into sorcery. No, you don't have to do that. Just understand what happened at the beginning, you know, is exactly what's going to go on in the end. 
See, it is have to tell you there is no new thing under the what? Sun. Whatever is taking place has already taken place already. And whatever is going to take place has already taken place. So what? Already. It's just a good person you are just over to learn. It's when it's over to learn are you understanding over to learn. See? It just repeats itself. The manifestation changes. In other words, the way it presents itself, it looks different. But the principle remains the one. Same. You say, I am the hour. I declare the end right from the beginning. So, since in the beginning, see, he appeared to mankind through divine vision and revelation. Hmm? And if you understand the beginning, when you get back to Moses, and you see, that there was a one daughter in Egypt. She that actually projected himself to Moses at the burning bush and instructed Moses to return down into Egypt. And he told you that one name was called Joshua. And he was never Joshua, he is Yahshua. See? Hmm? And the uncontroversy. Hold on. What is controversy? Beyond all arguments, all debates, all discussions, and beyond all controversy. Deep is the mystery of holiness. Deep or great is the mystery of holiness. Read on. He was manifested in human form. Oh, 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 I want the King James. See, I don't want the Greek back. I want that King James. See, that's the only name of it. See, what I, that's what I tell you. See, all books and all Bibles have the only, only two things in there. You see, deep is the mystery of faith, it's a mystery of holiness. Without controversy. And what? And without controversy. Great is the mystery of holiness. Great is the mystery of holiness. So holiness is a mystery. And it's a great mystery. You have, in other words, in this creation, there's two great mysteries playing itself out. The mystery of holiness is a great mystery. See? And the mystery of unrighteousness is also a great mystery. And if you look up the meaning of the word mystery, it is beyond human understanding. You have a satanic mystery and you have a holy mystery going on in this creation. You say great is the mystery of righteousness or holiness. Mm -hmm. Elohim was manifest in the flesh. The one you call God was manifested what? In the flesh. The one who created the universe 
would manifest it in the flesh. She, he was not up above the sun, moon, and stars, I was trying to tell you, beyond the iron and sphere. He manifests himself in the flesh. Uh -huh. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. He is the one he preached unto the Gentiles. Remember the telling the creator of the world, preached to the Gentiles. Manifested in the what? In a fleshly body. He was not up above the sun, moon, and stars when he was preaching to them. Read on. Believed on in the world. Believe on in the world. Receive up into glory. Receive up into glory. I want to show you something because we will have this creator or savior up above the sun, moon, and stars. And it's only when they die, they're going to have to give account. See? But that is not so. See, that is not so. It was never so. See? Even the same John 1 1 and the 10th verse. Hmm. See? Bears it out also. Sun, moon, and stars. And the world was made by him. See? The one who made the world, who is Yahweh Elohim, he was in the world. The world was made by him. And the world knew him not. And the world knew him not. She was walking the world in a physical body. See? And remember, he said, remember the former things of what? Oh, is that correct? That he declared the end from the, from the beginning. So if in the beginning he was walking in the world in a physical body, then what you say is that he, can, he don't speak the truth. You see? Be careful how we think. He said he declares the end from the beginning. So in the beginning, he was walking the world. So in the end, he walked in the world. As a matter of fact, he never left the world. <clears throat> we say it, you know, but we don't believe it. You see, because this mind, this kind of mind, prevents us from thinking those kind of things. See? Prevent us from thinking it. So he was walking the world in a physical body. And he said, remember the former things of old. So he stopped. So I declare the end right from the beginning. So when you go even to the time when it was at the appointed time for him to die for the sins of the world, you see, and the children of Israel back here in fulfillment of the Passover. That was done in Egypt, and the afternoon Sabbath was doing it with his disciples before he was crucified in fulfillment of that Passover. See? And then when he went into the Garden of Gethsemane, see? He went into the Garden of Gethsemane. Remind there, Judas went and he made 
is agreement. See with the high priest, Sanhedrin Council, to betray Yahshua by subtlety. See? So when he was in the garden, Judas led the Sanhedrin Council to him. And remember, they come, they're, going in, they're coming in the night, showing that principle of their eyes. And they will have their lighted torches, very significant. And they will be coming to that guard in the night. And they will be walking on the band of them, and they will be made many under it. See, and their bodies, with the, the, the light is shining, pale, and the city crowd. When you look at it from a distance, you will see it look, making the configuration of a serpent coming through the guard. See? So when Pilate, he was taken to Pilate. And Pilate said, Don't you know, man, I have the power to grant you your life or to take your life. He told about Pilate, No man taketh my life. He said, I lay it down and I take it up again. See, they have not understood that yet. See, that he was always walking through the in the creation that he has made, was not up above the sun, moon, and stars. See? So he declared the end from the beginning. So if you want to leave him as a story in a book, what is going to be a story in a book to your life? See? But we are, have always been in the reality of the thing. So this man down here, to prove it, that is the actual one, the one who did work. He's the one down there in Egypt. Communicated with Moses at the burning bush. So that is how we could tell Moses who you think make man of, who make, who make the blind and deaf and down to see is it not I yeah. See? Because Yahweh was down there in the body. As the one you call Joshua, who is Yahshua, down there in the land of Egypt. Because it was promised. See? Joseph, before he died, and he laid on the staff, and he's telling the children, his children, what your future is going to be. See? And then you end up telling them, when he died, do not leave his bones down there. Take it up. See? Because Joseph was a type of shadow of the actual inside. So that's how he could have told Moses to come down to Egypt. Say, come now, and I will send you on the field. He didn't say, go down, Moses. If he was up above the sun and moon and stars, he would have to say, go down, Moses. 
He said, come on here, bro, and I will set you on the river. So when you come, you will see me, and I'm going to set you on the river. When Moses started said, behold, he will not believe me. He will not believe me. He will not believe me when I tell him, you are with him. He wasn't staying from up above the sun, moon, and stars and whispering down to Moses and Aaron. She will read it. I mean, sometimes we miss the whole thing. Because our mind has been brought up in very superstitious. We school of a whole set of skepticism. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to teach you what to say. And furthermore, I'm going to be with God in order with Aaron God. I will be to you. I make you to Aaron as though he was the creator of the world. I'm going to make Aaron as though he's the prophet. So you have done here when the kingdom, you have the manifestation of Lord's prophecy. And you have Yahshua down there. So you have the law, the prophecy, and the law fulfillment down in Egypt. So speak of this. Because remember, they had to be delivered out of the hands of Pharaoh. Hmm? Was it to get up here? See? Remember, he's up in the land of Midian. He is not down here in Egypt. That of itself is of great significance. See, Egypt represents ignorance, lack of knowledge and understanding. I said a superstition, skepticism. You see, a lot of satanic rituals. That is what Egypt is famous for. See? So Moses, if he was done here in Egypt, he could just see nothing. Yahweh could not deal with him in Egypt. See? He had to elevate him out of Egypt. How did he elevate him? See? He killed a man. That was blood. He came in the sand, that's a burial. Kill him, that's a dead burial. No. And he puts fire, that's water. He was a little child, so he had his spirit and fire in him. So that is blood and water spirit. He's 40 years of age. Blood and water spirit for him. Yeah, very well right. He gives him to the villages on the third day. Soon for that resurrection on the third day. That's how we get up to here. By love, word, spirit, for the death, very well resurrection on the third day, in principle. That's how he get up to here. Now he was so afraid of his life, so he ran into the wilderness. But if he was still down here, yeah, we could deal with him. See? So they show you he came here by the well and he had to go to the and go to the blood. See? He became the high priest, son in law, Jethro Well. See? And that is not how long 
long have you been up here? You've been up here for 40 years. Where did you think you made it? Up there. What was his job? His job was to take care of a machine. What is that showing that he's going to, he's going to be a shepherd? Yeah, we training him on the job training. See how he take care of the sheep. Hmm? And in so doing, you see, and he's going through the situation that he has, he's learning. See? Yahweh is preparing his method. Preparing because why? Yahweh is the potter and we are the clay. See? So the potter is dealing with the clay, which is the man who is, so that when he gets, when he gets his commission, he could try it out. So he went through all the difficulties and the ups and downs up here. And when the metal was ready, tried and tested and went through all the, the difficulties up here, that is when the yard communicated with him. But he had to prepare the goods for the job. See? He had to humble him in this vessel. He had to humble him. So for 40 years, it was being made to be humble. See, because when we have this exalted ego, we can't do nothing with it. See, we always know. We could tell somebody something. See what I'm saying? So you have to, you have to reduce it. To learn to have faith and trust in Yahweh, who is spirit, for his, for his total existence up here. So that is when the metal was ready, that's how we could communicate with him. See, he's at an, an, an elevated state of consciousness now. See? So that's how Yahweh could meet with him, because he prepared him. Audience, so to what we do. So that is all. You have it done. You have it. Three of them done. You know. Three of them done. You probably see why. The fulfillment. They look all in time. Yahweh, 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 Yahshua, too. But one. See, is one giving the orders. Is one controlling the whole thing. But using the two bodies. So that is where you tell Pilate, no man take up my life. I lay down and pick it up a bit. So don't get no in each other. Remember giving the three signs and the wonders of hell. So, and there are three signs. See? The rod turning into the silver and he tell him to pick it up by the back, the tail. 
when he did test for chess for the beginning of my day. Because you know, like that's the one we're gonna get in. But if you notice something, because he was humble up here, you know, he has to obey. He had to be obedient because he was taught to be obedient in 40 years of fear. See, mankind will not be obedient at all. Something has to happen. You see? He knew the serpent was going to kill him. He was afraid because he ran from him. We are with him. You pick it up by the table. See that obedient. Because he learned the obedient of Peter. See? So in the face of death, he had to go down now and humble himself before this serpent and take it up by the table. See? And then he'll come back into the road. Humility. See? Not voluntary humility we talk about. See? So he went to psychologically and then the memory. When he was told to put his hand in his bosom and he became a leper. And I was told to take him back out and was cured by as his other friend. Okay, that went to a he went to a death a burial and a resurrection, psychologically. So when he was told to go by the river, take a container, dip the water out of the river and pour it in the dry water, and it turned blood to him. So what he has here, the principle of blood, water, Yahweh, Yahweh who is spirit is communicating with him, blood, water, spirit. He's a distant of 50 years of age. Lord, what is very important. And with that, the signs of blood, what is very important. Three signs death, burial, resurrection, and the day. And he's coming what? He's coming in the main, in the main. See? For salvation and deliverance is in the main. So when you get David with Goliath, see, the three sons of Jesse showing the principle of the third. Goliath showing himself, see, for 40 days, he showed himself to the armies of Israel who was afraid. And he was closing them out, putting me out. When David said, see, when David joined the battle, remember he did not want to use the armor that the king presented him, because he was not used to it. See? But he used his sling and his with his stones, that's what he used. Where did he get the stones from? He got the stones from in the brook. Then he came towards the ladder with the sling and the stones and the stick, the staff in his hand. What did Goliath say? See, I'm, I'm a dog. You come to me with stick and stones, but he gave my words a hard word. And he said, I come in the name of Yahweh, and Yahweh will to deliver me out of your hands today. You see? 
So Sabi shall not always say the what? The name. See, Goliath was dependent on his own physical strength. You see? And his arm. See that what he trusted in. David said, I trust in Yahweh. Yahweh will deliver me. Or deliver you into my hands today. She took the stone, put it in the sling, and he sling it, and take the lion in his forehead and prepare the ground. He ran and took the lion's own sword and cut off his neck. Then he lifted up the head towards the armies of Israel, and the spirit within them revived. And the came and stayed, the Egyptians. What are they telling you? I was telling you. They were in the, 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 the children of Israel were delivered out in the name. See? The blood. The road with the water when he cut up his head, that's the blood. So the stones coming from the road, blood water. The spirit revived blood water spirit. And remember. Goliath showed himself to them for 40 days and 40 days. So that is, we have death, burial, resurrection, on the third day, blood, water, spirit, water. That's why I say, remember the former things of what? It was no cross. David will go and say, no set of cross. See? It manifests itself. See? The children, the, the people of Nineveh were delivered the same way. See, if we don't remember the common things of the world, we get tired of it with all of these things we see going on, these pagan things we see going on, with these pagan names and titles. See? So we have to kind of go back to the beginning. And remember the former things of the world. Because Yahweh declares the end from the beginning. So when Nineveh that we could see him, and Yahweh sent Jonah the Christian, sent Jonah being disobedient to the spoken word of Yahweh. We know he went to take a boat going in a different direction to Tarsus. See, sometimes Yahweh has a purpose for mankind and we have our own ambitions. See, and because of our own ambitions, he just have to straighten us up our own. We have what we want to do and how we want to do it. That is the same thing Jonah went to do. Manifestation changes the Principle what remains the same. So here is the Jonah born. See, and he's on a canvas and he's going to need um, the Tarsus. Yeah, we call that three, what? Tempest on the sea. Hmm? Create difficulties. Sometimes we're going to do wrong against the purpose of Yahweh. Yeah, we just have to stop us. We just have to stop us. Half a to remind us of our soul. Hmm? We have to put obstacles in our way. Sometimes of our great ambition. See? So what he did now, in this when the tempest was going on, remember the sailors, they were afraid. The one who, as a result of his behavior, which is Jonah, he was not afraid. He was asleep in the ship. And the ones who had no understanding of what's taking place, they had sense enough to be afraid. So with that, 
Remember the day. Means sacrifice, blood sacrifice is your Lord. He will cut the own cells. And they cried out. And the tempest and they cried out to the previous deities of God. Showing that I am Yahweh and there is what? None else. All these speak so called gods is a pigment of people's what? Stubbornness to the truth. Same for people who are in Yahweh, that's why you are all that. So with that, Juno was question who he was. He said he knew. See, who do you serve? He said, I serve Yahweh Elohim. So what is he doing? He's declaring the name. So they want to know why your Yahweh Elohim is plaguing us. Because I've been disobedient. So what we did now, so what will we do with you, man? They cast you overboard that the sea might be calm unto you. They didn't want to do that at first, but eventually they cast you overboard. So he was considered dead, and then Yahweh had a great fish to swallow him up. So that's a death and a burial. We have the blood and the water. Yahweh man, that's in the temple, that's in the sea, blood, water, spirit. And then Jonah ended up, you see, in the fish's belly. And Jonah, in the book of Jonah, he said, in the belly of hell cried I. Did he say that? Mm -hmm. So he is put in a hell state of mind and condition. But it is obedient to the school to do that. See, here and there, here and here and here. Can you see when I'm Yahweh paying him in hell? Then he in hell now and he's confessing. See, those who forsake Yahweh, he said, forsake their own mercy. So then Yahweh is. And the fish came out and tried on the river on the third day. So, how did he come? How did the how did the Levites going to get deliverance? So you have the prince of blood and blood, the sailors making the blood sacrifice, the sea being the water, the blood water, Yahweh who spirit, manifested the tempest of the sea, blood water spirit. So the preaching in the world of 40 days and 49. So blood, water, spirit, water, death, burial, and resurrection on the third day. That's all. So, and then Yahweh had no Jonah. Now the Christian believer. And he never what? Repented. See? So you see, all of these salvation coming to the name. And the principle of blood, water, spirit, water, death, burial, and resurrection on the two days. See? That has to be fulfilled. See? So when Yahshua the Messiah came into his ministry, see? And they did not understand what he was doing. And in the, the, the people criticizing him that he's not keeping the law of Moses. See? He's not obeying the Sabbath day law. See? So he tells in Matthew 5 17 and 18, he said, Think not. Don't think. 
Keep telling people, find out where you get your thoughts what? from. Who giving you these thoughts? Where these thoughts is coming from? Hmm? Did you find out if it's coming from righteous, the righteous mystery? Or is it coming from the unrighteous mystery? Why? Because remember in the garden of Eden, this was in the garden of Eden. You had the righteousness in the garden of Eden, and had the mystery of unrighteousness in the garden of Eden. See? And it tell you when the man Adam God was killed. What happened? The servant came into the garden and deceived the woman. How did he deceive her? Torch. Put torch in her mind to go against the commandment of Yahweh of all the trees in the garden you may freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it. Don't touch it, you see that. Now the question is, were there other trees? Yes, there must be other trees. So why would I say that? Hmm? Because he only made the man, and he gave the man a belly. And a breath. See, he didn't take out the belly and then give him a some other time. So once he gave him a belly, he had to eat. See? So there must be other trees that he eat of. But this tree don't eat of it. Don't even touch it, you see that. And then the, the serpent comes and he comes with his thoughts. And so it entice them with the thoughts that is coming to her. You see? That if she eat, you see, she will do for the evil, and she's going to be just like Yahweh Elohim. See what I'm saying? That's what she's telling her. She, you have something to gain here. By being disobedient, you have something to gain. Not realizing she also has something to lose. But he's not going to tell her that. He's not going to tell her he has, she has something to lose. He's going to tell her she has something to gain. She's going to be just like the other. What the woman did not know, she didn't know her value. She did not know her value. She did not know she was made in the image of Yahweh the man. And his spirit was in her. With Yahweh's spirit was in her. She didn't know that. She did not know the serpent was going to rub her of that peace, joy, and happiness in heaven. She didn't know that. She thought she had something to gain. He got something to offer. No, he had something to take. You see? And because she didn't understand, who she was, she discredited her own self. She, and she take on the fruit in her mind of what was offered to her. Disobeying the commandment of Yahweh right inside of her. See? Because she was made in the image of Yahweh. And Yahweh helped him bring his breath of life into her. And breath means what? Spirit. So his spirit is inside of her. So the devil gone now. You are not to offer. He never had anything to offer. He took. She? He took. And Adam did. And she obeyed now. Adam willingly died for his wife. Violet came down with the transgression. 
So now it's, it's starting in the garden, is that correct? So then when it ended, you must end up in the what? The garden. See, they don't understand that yet. So that is why Yahshua and Zai have to be the garden of what? Gethsemane. And that is why Judas and his band in the Sunday were manifesting the devil coming in. See that devil coming in in the garden. You see? Well, he was in the garden of devil, in pure spirit, so he's in the garden down here. So don't leave him out. Yahshua down here and the devil down here. Don't leave him out. See? So what he comes and do now? What Jesus come and do? Point him out by kissing him. Hmm? So he has to tell him, you betray me by that kiss. Hmm? Come and kiss him. See? So that is how we do. He identified it. So now, when Yahshua comes in, see, he's the Lamb of Yahweh that taketh away the sins of the world. So down here in Egypt, when they had the Passover, see, they had to examine that Lamb. So Yahshua is the Lamb of Yahweh that taketh away the sins of the world. So he must be identified as the Lamb. See? See then, John 1, 29, and he said, I am the door. See? See if we get out of the way. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall be saved. And shall go in and out. And shall go in and out. And find pasture. And find pasture. So he's the lamb and he's the door. Because the father goes down in me. See? Where the blood is put. See? On the top of the door, at the Passover, the two side doors. And the rest of the world is the base of the door. See, so he's the door, he's the lamb. See? He's also, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. That the man may eat your heart and never die. I am the living bread. So remember when the children of Israel, see, was given that bread to eat in the wilderness. It had to be unleavened bread. Had to be unleavened bread. Why? What is unleavened bread? Unleavened bread is bread that does not have anything to make it right. Why? Because the after the Messiah had not died, was buried and resurrected. And he's the bread. See? And the bread has not died, was buried and resurrected for the sins of the world. So, therefore, that is why 
seeing that Google's one already there, the PS will be the side. That none of these bones might be what? Broken. Then they see this other guy here. They broke his bones. Yeah, what they did was they broke his one bones here too. Two of them on either side of the bones broke broken. But Yahshua did not get his bones broken. They pierced him in the side. When they pierced him in the side, blood and water came up. These two others here, they got their bones broken. Because it must be fulfilled. The scriptures must be fulfilled. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is what? Broken. So we get the blood, the water. Then Yahshua the Messiah, he gave up the ghost, saying, It is finished. I am finished fulfilling the law of the prophets. You see? And he hung his head in his lungs. See? So he went to a death. Very well, and then he was put in Joseph the tomb. It was sealed, and early in the morning, the third day, when the women went to the tomb, they saw that he was resurrected. So he went to a death, a burial, and a resurrection on the third day. Blood, water, spirit. And he tarried on the earth plane for 40 days and 40 nights. And that is how salvation was passed to all men who believe on him. Give me. Give me the 14th chapter of John. Not your heart be troubled. This is Yahshua the Messiah back here telling them, his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Yahweh. You believe in Yahweh Elohim. Believe also in me. Believe also in me. In my father's house. He said, My father's house, there are many mansions. And I tell you. Mm. Mm. And I tell you. I must go to prepare a place for you. I must go to prepare a place for you. And if I go. And if I go and prepare a place for you, and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you unto myself. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, that where I am, there you may be also. There you may be also. This is what. See, he didn't say where I am going. See, this is what the teacher. The teacher be resurrected. Mm -hmm. And we have to go where he is. He went. No, he didn't tell them that. See, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it was so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. He is going to prepare a place. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, where was he? Right in the earth with them. So where I am, not where I'm going, there he may be also. Hmm? In other words, when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, that is Yahshua in them, and they walk in the third plane, where he was. Is that correct? See? Not up above the sun, moon, and what? And stars. Uh, give me 14 and 20. I just want to just get that and complete. At that day, at that day, you shall know that I am in my Father. In that day, you shall know that I am in the Father. And he in me. And he in me. And I in me. And I in me. Is that up above the sun, moon, and stars? Let's get it again. In that day, 
In other words, when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, in that day, you shall know, you shall know that I am in my Father. You say, I am in my Father. Mm -hmm. And you expect you going to be in Him. And I just know. We are going to be what? We are supposed to be what? In Him. That is why Yahshua in you is your only hope of glory. Glory. Not I am up above the sun, moon, and stars, and you've got to come and meet me when you're there. In that day, you're going to know that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and I in you. See? Not I above the sun, moon, and what? Star. And you come in when you're there. Because eternal life is to know. So when you have the profound knowledge and understanding of the truth, you're living it. See, and you make sure that the demons and them can overturn that mystery in your mind for you to hold up into the creator. So you will remain in the peace, joy, and happiness. With these few words, I say hallelujah. Hope you have learned something from it today. Look have a good day and stay safe.